everybody angela here again how are you all doing today well um i'm back to bring you uh another episode of how to make a basic junk journal and as promised i'm going to show you a couple of um, basic envelopes and how i do those for my journals so that is what we're going to do quickly today um so i hope you're going to join me in doing that Right, so here are some examples of the kind of things that I'm going to show you. It looks more complicated than it is. I've used um, wallpaper. I'm going to show you how to make one using um, old book pages as well. So what we have here is, if we just look at that one, um, some wallpaper base here. I like it because it's got a lovely uh, discoloured sort of antique colour there some basic bits and pieces, a piece of lace, um, paper ruffle from scraps, put a butterfly on there, so that's that one. And then on this side, I've just put on like a stamp that I've got from one of the kits. I'll show you a couple of options, a bit of a fussy cut flower. So that's really simple. Um, and that's what that is there. And then what I've done here is also use some um, more paper you can use any paper really scrapbooking paper is great because it's printed on both sides often um, so I've just put a few scraps on here one of those Tracy labels and on this one instead of a paper ruffle I've just put on a piece of um, sari ribbon or fabric which I've just zigzagged across there and made a little cluster with some more scraps so that's what I've done there on this side again I've put on one of Nikki Adigan's lovely butterfly la labels um, and just put a few bits of fussy cut uh, flowers over here with a little label as well so those are make great additions to your journals um, I like to use them as you know you can either put them over over a side of a page and have that on the one side and that on the other or you can clip them in or you can make a pocket with it glue down those three sides and tuck things in at the top you can make use them for flip outs all sorts of things so these are always great additions to journals um i love as i said i've got lots of wallpaper so here's another example of some wallpaper that i might make into a pocket this is nice because it's got lots of decoration you don't have to do too much for it perhaps just a, a stamp and a label and maybe some flowers also or scraps of paper that you have so there's lots that you can do with that so i'm going to show you how to make one with wallpaper remember you can get wallpaper anywhere you can get it um, often as um, off cuts at a local diy store you can get it online um, and it's a great um, item to work with and um, you know you can use it for so many things i use it for a lot um, and, and for envelopes is great but then again we also stuck with a lot of book pages and I want to show you how I do that as well so let's start with the book page one um, basically what I do with a book page is here's um, a double book page and I wouldn't use any of those images here in my actual books but I, I like this paper it's an old book but it's a fairly decent thickness but I still stick to these together so that's the first thing that we are going to do so what have I done with the glue stick we're going to take this glue stick here and we're just going to run it over the one page um, and it's easy with this because they are still joined but if they're not that's fine grab your um something just or your hand you know that's also fine i like using my hands for these kind of things and then you're going to get a nice big base to work with really so that's made it so much thicker which is great now all that i um do here is i decide how um high i want this now for this one what i'm going to do before i tell you what, <laughs> what measurements to use and things is um, I like to use this on a base page. So if, for example, that's my page, I like to use these at the bottom like that um, 
trim them to the width I want and then use them as a tuck spot over there and then you've got a nice opening like that. So bearing in mind the size of your page, the size of the envelope that you want to use, uh, bear that in mind um, when you're going to make that. So just put that back over there. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to trim this a little bit just on the one side. So I want to just grab a ruler here and I'm going to use a craft knife. So just be careful with your fingers. I'm a fan of a craft knife. Right, so let's make this slightly narrower here so it fits comfortably onto a page. So that looks a little bit narrower. I'll just put this down the side here. And now what we want to do is um, Work out how much of a bit you want on the top. So that would be like about there. And once I've worked that out, then I know how much I want to, high or low I want to make that. Now don't make it too high to the corner, to the fold line, because if you make it too high, you're going to really struggle to get things out of there. So I like to make it slightly lower so that I've got plenty of space to get that out of there as well now um, something that you might want to do is if it's easier for you you don't have to do this you can notch with one of your circle punches a little thumb um, hole place there if you want I don't do that I rather make it lower and that suits me fine and then um, that's going to be the top uh, so what I do with that is I take my circle punch then and I just notch the corner, each corner of the actual flap and round it. And I also notch the bottom of my um, envelope like that. So when you look at it, it's got a nice rounded effect. You can do the top there, but I don't do that. I just do it like that. So that would um, be a great sort of base now for you to... Put some collaging bits on, um, raid that uh, scrap pile and get rid of the bits as much as you can. I did have a, a think this morning that I should take all the bits and put them into different colours if that would help me, but I didn't get that far today. So I haven't done it, but I might end up doing that at some point. All right, so I'm going to just put that aside. I've got one ready here already. Um, where the glue's dry, that I can feel still is a bit messy. And then what I've done is I have gone through my um, scrap pile there. So I just want to take this because I will be using a little bit of that in a minute. Desk looking pretty mess messy today. So what I've done is I've decided for the top here. Um, oh, and I haven't rounded these corners yet. So we just do that there and here. You can do this after you've stitched if you like. It's up to you. All right, so let's. This is much firmer now, nice and set. So for the top, um, I've just taken a scrap piece that I had in my pile there. I'm going to stick that there to cover up the writing. Then I've got bits and pieces that I sort of collect. So I like a lot of rectangular sort of pieces. I like to tear bits into rectangulars. This came from one of, I think this was the spring um, grandma's garden kit. I can't remember now. But and other great things that you might want to use for envelopes are little labels. These are from Tracy Fox. Um, I have collected a few things here. I've got some stamps. Those are from one of the Calico Collage kits, Nikki Adigan, Musings by Nikki. She does these as well. Um, My Porch Prince does some. These come from, I think, Grandma's Garden. These are actually real stamps. So stamps are a great thing, and you might want to use those. You might want to have some die cuts. Um, as I said, little scraps of um, bits and pieces that you might have in your um, scrap pile there. And then what I do use a lot of is, um, trying to get them there, are fussy cut flowers, which I get from all sorts of books and, and things. So um, 
I've got a couple of those and those are, are really great. Um, other things are bits I've um, torn up and thrown in a pile which is a huge pile next to me over here and I've got two <coughs> excuse me containers as well. So I thought I would um, use some of those bits as well. The other thing I like to use a lot is script. Um, I've got um, this is a genuine French um, old letter a piece of it um, and I like to tear off these words and use it as well so sometimes I use other bits you've seen me use this which is a, a digital which comes from um, Amity Bloom or I've got a blue one like that as well which is also from there um, depending on the size of the the script I use I might print two to four on a page obviously the other, other very popular one is of course Edith Holden's script which is also lovely to use so go and have a look and see what you can use when you get um, when I first started out and people were talking about scraps I had to make scraps because I had no scraps but I'll tell you I've got a house load of scraps <laughs> as we all end up having right so let's get cracking what we're going to do is we're going to start with the the flap so I am going to take my um, glue stick and I'm going to just run this over there and I want to just stick that um, at the top of the flap like that so that's covered most of the writing there which is great okay and then what I had was um, I thought I would have a piece of this blue and I quite like this little bulb plants goodie um, and I have those white trays that I collect bits and pieces in so whenever I have little bits collecting I throw them into one of those divided bits there so I can always use them for something so it's just a case of how do I want this to look so um I just mess about with it until I find something that I'm happy with. Okay, now this one I'm not going to put a ruffle on. This is um, one that I'm going to use as it is. So I think, I think, I think, I'm going to just put that on there like that. So I'm going to just stick this down here. The glue stick, put that on over there. And then just take this one as well. Um, and I have that. Yeah, I'm going to just put it over there. Oh, I'm quite happy with that. A little bit of blue and a little bit of pink. So that's all right. So I'm going with blue and pink here. Yeah? So here's a little scrap that I had working on those envelopes the other day. I'm going to put that onto the corner there. I've got another little bit of a scrap that I've just torn out a little bit of a edging and I think I'm gonna um, put that sort of there and then this came out of the same piece and I've just cut this out roughly so I'm gonna put that down somewhere and then I've just got again a little bit of script that I'm gonna mess about and I think probably end up putting there and something like that so that's what i'm going to do so that's going to be on the top this needs to go down first so let's do that so what have you all been doing today i have just recorded my um journal flip through <laughs> which took me forever to make and you will have seen that by now most probably and that was an opus event um, and then, well, after that, I heard the neighbour playing some um, Frank Sinatra next door. So I decided to uh, put on my own classics music. And I was having a little waltz in the <laughs> living room, I think, to um, Bobby Devon <laughs> and the Rat Pack, <laughs> various songs that I had on my playlist through Spotify on the TV so I'm going to use a different glue I'm going to use my 
um, so that was a bit of fun. I was doing a little bit of a, a waltz and a uh, bit of a quick step and things. So I remembered learning long ago, long, long ago. And it was quite fun with the dog, just the dog and I. <laughs> As you do when you're stuck here and you own some. So um, that was a bit of fun. And then afterwards I was just like quite psyched up. So that took me quite a while to calm down. It was quite hard exercise really oh i think this is um finished let me just change this with my other one what have i done with the other one? Oh, it's over there oh no this is not finished sorry let me just grab my um pokey tool where's the pokey tool missing everything today let me just sort this out quickly good thing i got my glasses on so i can see what i'm doing right i think that's sorted that out oh my gosh okay we're not going to hassle with that I'll leave that there go back to my uh, fabric tack okay so i'm gonna just stick this on yeah so that's what i was doing the other thing i've been doing is i uh, ran out of uh, wet wipes and i use a lot of wet wipes for crafting because i don't like the glue all over my hands and i um because there's a shortage of wet wipes, I decided to, I remembered long ago from when I had children, babies, um, that I had made my own wet wipes. And I'm sure this is not news to any of you, but uh, you can make your own wet wipes. So I did that and they are fantastic. I'm going to show you in a minute because I'm going to need one. That goes over there like that. Right, so there's. I'm not going to do anything on the back of this one because um, I'm going to be sticking that down in my book so that would be that would have glue there then there onto my book so I'm quite happy with that um, I might do a decorative row of stitching over there so that's that's looking all good I just want to straighten that up um, as you can see just a little bit of collaging there and a little bit on the top and I'm quite happy with that that looks really cute right let's just put that on there um, yes, yeah, so let me grab my wet wipe so you can see. So I've um, put them in here. Um, and what I did was I used a kitchen towel. So I just pull it from the middle here, look. And it feels so good. They, um, This is not toilet roll, it's kitchen roll. And um, it was really good. And... You probably don't know this about me, but I have a um, sort of, I don't have the greatest, I've got to watch what I wash in because I get a, a, uh, I have an intolerance to certain soaps. So I've used um, the ones that I can use um, with baby oil and other things that I've mixed in there. And it's really, look at that. It's just amazing. It feels so nice. So that was my... <laughs> joys today as you do okay so there's our first envelope so what i'm going to do quickly i'm going to um put that aside i'm going to oops put that aside i'm going to now just tackle the one that looks like this and we're going to quickly put that together this one we would have loosely um fitting over a page or and decorate both sides so let's have a little look at that so what i've done is I've taken a piece of wallpaper. This again depends on the size of the envelope that you want. The finished envelope here will be um, four inches by five and a half. So that's what the finished envelope would be here. So it's just a case of the whole piece that I used and cut out was, let's stick with inches. Um, eight and three quarters by that'll be four um, five and a half okay so that's what we are going to 
to do. Cut a eight and three quarters by five and a half. And then what I did was I folded down the top flap. Um, this one's just short of one and a half inches. And then I folded the bottom flap up by just short of three and a half inches. So of course, as I said, you can do this however you want. Um, this is just what I've done here, and this is a nice size to work with. So again, I'm gonna start with doing this flat bit. Now what I did there was, I went and got some of the scraps that are in this pile next to me, um, and I have just torn them. And then this, I have taken my thumb and my finger and I'm making paper ruffles with, with this. So just taking that over, folding it like a little zigzag um, all the way down. Now it won't be precise. Okay, so there's one. Now I've got two because I knew I'd, I'd run short with this. So just take a little bit of glue run it on there and the inside of that one there and just fold a little bit over like that and we're going to just fit that over there and nobody's any the wiser press it down look there it looks like it was made it was joined there and it's invisible and then we just carry on to go to the end all right so how long do I need this oh I think I'm just about there so I'm going to just tear that off over there so we want to just be able to fit this straight across the the flap like that all right so we, we will sew that in a minute and then all I did was to put underneath a little piece of lace so here's a piece of lace and I'm going to quickly glue a piece like that over there on the flap so let's open the flap up quickly use some of your I'm using fabric tack because it's glue and paper glue and paper it's lace and paper oh my goodness I tell you I get all my words wrong when I'm recording i was thinking that the other day some of the things that i say and i know better but you know it is a bit flustering when you are recording and trying to think of all the words i don't know it's just too many things for me at once right so we've got some glue on there and we are just going to put our lace and i've i've got about a half a quarter inch i'm just um keeping it smooth like that I want the lace to go over the edge so I've got more than enough there just trim that off at the end there we go that's nice and fine we're going to stitch that in a minute so that's all right and then let's take our little paper ruffle um, um, very lightly I'm just using what was on the end of this. I don't want it to be dark. I just don't want the white paper torn edge showing. If it is in spots. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly go to the machine. It doesn't matter that it's... I just want to line that up quickly. Um, and we are going to just do a, a straight... Well, I did a zigzag stitch, but you can do whatever you kind of stitch you want um, straight across over there. Just do it slowly. And remember what I said, um, take it easy. Just keep it down. If you're feeling more confident and you feel that you want to glue that in place first, this glue is fine with a machine. I think this one, um, I've never had a problem with this. It seems to work happier to sew over the this fabric tag type glue um if this helps you to keep it um in place then put a bit of glue down you know don't struggle um and this glue is very forgiving so if it doesn't matter if this ruffle isn't quite to the end just try and get it as um even on both sides as you possibly can like that so 
that'll give it um, keep it in place for the the moment um, and I will quickly go and sew straight across there like that okay and then I'll be back all right so there we have it I've just done um, two different I started off with a straight stitch I did a bit of zigzag in the middle for some interest and then I went straight across to the end and I'm pretty happy with that I think that looks really cute we we're going to put a butterfly on the send in a minute anyway I mean the choices that you can put on here are endless you can put little clusters from more of your little fabric and paper scraps you can put a butterfly on there um, what I've, I've got is um, some cheesecloth that I like to tease like this make it quite bitty and sparse and then put a butterfly on top there so we're going to do that in a minute but in the interim what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch across that line there and then I'm going to close that and then I'm going to stitch right um, from there all the way to there so that's what I'm going to do quickly I'll see you in a minute so I'm going to do this the inside flap first of all Okay, there's the inside flap so now we're going to go right around And now I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm going to, um, first of all, do the flap on the inside here. Once I've done that, straight across there, I can close that and then go right around. So let's do that as well. Okay, so there we have it. We've got our little envelope that we're going to stick onto a page and tuck things behind. Um, there we've, we've got that. It's nice and sturdy from the double piece of paper. And then we've got this envelope that um, I have stitched right round as well, like that. So all I want to do now is finish off um, decorating this one here. So um, first thing I want to do is grab one of these little um, pink bits here and I'm going to stick that on over there like that. I think that's what I was planning to do. So my fingers are full of ink. They look yellow. <laughs> right, so... Um, There we go. So we just put that piece over there like that. And then as I said to you, it's just a case of um, taking this old piece of French paper and I'm just going to end it after that word there. Like that. And this paper's really lovely as well. Like that, oops, and then we are going to just 
um, put it below like that. So that's all I'm going to do on that side, um, except I want to put a butterfly over there. So what I do is I just sort of pull out bits of the cheesecloth like this. Um, and then I just cut it off from the rest. Um, and then I've got this very loosely woven um, bits and pieces that I sort of just put together like this, really. And you've got this whole loose situation going on there. And then I just decide where I want to put that. So over here, it's going to be on this section over here. So I just put a, a bit of glue, quite a lot, because the, the butterfly is also going to need to stick on there so i just position that as i want it and then i'm going to just put a little bit more glue just a, a thin amount over there sorry the glue strings um, and then i'm going to take the butterfly oh the sun's coming over um like that and then I'm going to just put a little bit more on the top of the wings because that's where I don't have the middle seems to be all right. And then I'm going to just place that um, on the top there like that. And then, of course, we just want to put something in the middle. So put it in the middle. And I've just got a little pearl that I want to grip ultimately and put that on the body so I've got plenty of glue on there that that'll just finish that off so there we have the front of the envelope completed I'm quite happy with that and I love the subdued colors so that's really pretty just want to uh, make sure this is straight all right and then on this side while I'm letting that dry so I'll just turn that up for the minute um, what I do want to do there is I just put on a stamp and a little uh, a fussy cut flower that I cut out. So that's all I'm going to do over there. Um, and I chose this one, which I thought was pretty, which I fussy cut out of a book. I'm going to stick that over there. Um, you can put more than one on. Sometimes I do. Just depends. But it just depends. Sometimes less is more. You know, it just depends what you what kind of look you're going for. Have a play around, move the the fussy cut flowers um, about, and see um, how it it looks to you and how you feel about that. You know, and that's how I've worked it out is just by trial and error really, and just seeing what I I like and what I don't like. Use your scraps of paper. Don't be afraid. It doesn't have to have a flower on look at other things you know there are other things then the only other thing i want to put up here is i want to put a stamp on there so i've got these stamps that i've taken out that one looks quite good sort of ties in the colors that's blue so i don't want that um i think i'll probably go with that one that one's a bit that one could work as well i suppose but it's a bit small i think i'm gonna I'm going to go with that one there, um, which is quite nice. Um, and then just don't like the edge of the, the cut paper, so that's why I do that. And then I'm going to just stick this on here. You can put a bigger label in the middle if you want. Um, there are lots of things you can do. This is just the absolute basics. Um, I know that I've got Rachel's Roxy from uh, Roxy Creations. Um, she's got lovely labels, big labels as well. Tracy has. There are quite a few people. I think my favorite, I use Rachel's for, for the bigger ones, for the middle here, like the address type labels. So go and have a look at what she's got as well. And she's got loads of different ones and they're beautiful shapes and things and colors as well. So there we have it. Now, if you want to get... Um, really involved and you've got one of these sorry i'm just going to move this a little bit away um you can use a stamp so i've got my archival ink and i have i don't know if you can see this this is like a old postage um stamp on here 
um, so I've got one like that and I've also got another one which I'm probably going to use now and um, this one just says um, Paris 1921 so I've got those that I've had for ages um, just trying to look for a stamp block now I've managed to pull this one out so let's just take that that will work um, so I'm just going to put this on here like that and um, use archival ink for, for stamping things like this and then I'm just going to put that on there like that and then the same on any other one that you want to do so I had a blue one over here with one of Nikki's um, stamps just makes it look authentic I think take that out so make it flat so we got one there as well and then the last one over here was this one because the other so there we go we've got the the postmark as well if you've got that you don't have to do that this one as I said I don't need to do that although you could if you want to just do it on the front just because you don't have to use it for a um, actual stamp so let's just put a version of that on and just see if I put that over there like that nothing wrong with that okay so because we're not going to use the other side I'm going to um, glue the other side down so there we've we've got some examples of what to do with some envelopes you don't need an envelope board that is something completely different um, and here we've got a couple of envelopes that were took no time at all to make um, next time what I'll do is I want to show you a couple of things that we can do with um, pages so I've got pages I've got pockets, I've got all sorts of things that I'm going to show you how to use those. So join me next time um, and we'll have a little play with um, what to do with some book pages and some of those things that we can do. So thank you for that. That was a really quick, um, oh I see you all bent over here. Uh, that was a really quick uh, tutorial but at least it shows you some basics on envelopes. So I'll see you again very soon with another episode. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.